43% of you guys said that the next target that you're aiming for was your first 100k. But if you have less than 100k, there are some things that you shouldn't be doing. What is going on everyone? Welcome back to the Baking Analyst channel and today we're going to be talking about what you should do at every net worth level because the strategies that you should be using, whether in crypto or in other investments, would probably vary depending on how much you already have as a nest egg. So for each net worth category, we'll be having a look at what I personally think the best approach is and if you really want to include crypto in your approach, what the strategy should be. So the first category would be as per the title of the video, what if you had less than 100k? Now some of you who have been in this DeFi space for long enough might be thinking of putting your money into random small cap altcoins, going into yield farms, or God forbid, putting all your savings on a meme coin. But the point of today's discussion is to actually bring a reality check to this. Right now, based on current market conditions, there is little value if you have less than 100k available to actually play around and move your funds around yield farms. If we go on to blue chip real yield protocols such as GMX, you're only getting about 10.49% APR, which for lack of a better word is pathetic. And if you wanted to go into a newer pool, however, things like Eldorado are paying out 93% as of the moment. But when you have less than 100k, you probably only want to be putting 10% anyway aside into this crypto portfolio. The reason why this is the case is because people don't get wrecked because a coin goes to zero. You get wrecked because put too much of your funds into a high risk project with a high probability of failure that ultimately went to zero. What I'm saying is that in such a case, if you are practicing proper risk management, then this stuff really isn't something that will pay off. For example, if you had, say, $10,000 to put aside, 10% of $10,000 is only $1,000 per year. So can you imagine you will only be getting $1,000 per year for the entire year on something like GMX? And in an era where you can get 2 or even 3% on a cash account, that is not something that sounds particularly enticing. That marginal $100 a month, would that really make a difference for you? And if you have even less than 100K, let's say you have only 10K, if you put 1K into this thing, well, you're not really earning very much. So if you have have less than 100k, really what I think you should be doing is to try to get that number up. So that could be through things like raising income through other sources. And I've talked about this in several other videos that you can check out in the playlist linked down below. However, if you really want to make use of crypto, I think that the best strategy for you to go about doing this would be things like chasing airdrops. And a reason for this is because these airdrops allow you to build capital at a relatively cheap cost. Now, you might not always get an airdrop. As we all know, it's very, very speculative. However, when you do get that airdrop, the percentage of your overall portfolio that that airdrop is likely to be is going to be much larger if you had less than 100k and you are allocating your portfolio somewhat responsibly. And on that note, let me talk about some actionable tips that you can go about using with the top three airdrop opportunities that I think will be the highest in value. Now, we'll be speed running this because I've covered these in previous videos, but the three items on the list are going to be ZK Sync, Layer Zero, and Startnet. So there you have it. These projects have had the most funding available and therefore the launch market cap of their token is likely to be the highest. So you can play around with things like Sync Swap on ZK Sync. You can play around with the Cashmere app on Layer Zero or even Stargate for that matter and Jedi Swap on Startnet. And now if you're interested in learning step by step how to do this, leave a comment down below and I'll consider making a video for you guys. But that that is what I meant to say. If you have less than 100k and you don't have much capital, then honestly, don't bother with yield farming in this kind of sideways deadish market because the returns that you'll be getting will be pretty abysmal. So now let's move on to the next net worth category. It's going to be for a lot of you. So that is going to be the 100k to 1 million level. Now, if you're in this bracket, the game changes up bits because now you have more capital to allocate towards things like yield generating opportunities. And the returns that you'll be getting will actually be somewhat decent. For example, if you had say $200,000 or $300,000 in a bank and you had $30,000 available to invest in this really high risk space called DeFi, then well, you could possibly put $30,000 into GMX, which is probably a low risk choice, and you'll be getting something like $3,000 a year. Not great, definitely better than the maximum of $1,000 a year that someone having less than 100k and practicing proper risk management 
investment would be able to get out of this whole exercise. You might also consider going to yield farms that are slightly higher risk with a smaller portion of your portfolio. For example, if you were to put 10k instead into this slightly higher risk yield farm, El Dorado Finance, the reason why I'm saying it's slightly higher risk is because first of all, it's a fork, it has less total value locked, and it's relatively newer, you will be able to get 90% APR on trading fees alone. Let's say you put 10,000 into this thing, you'll get 9,000 a year. Now remember, this is likely not sustainable in the long run because this stuff fluctuates up and down. Nonetheless, you'll be getting close to $800 a month if my math works out to be correct. So that is considerably better than what we're seeing in the earlier net worth bracket case and certainly more usable in terms of actually making a difference to day-to-day -day living. So yield farms really for the lot of you who are between 100k and 1 million in overall net worth. Now, if you're among this 14% who clearly have over 1 million since 5 million is your next net worth target, then things actually change quite a bit more. And the reason for this is because when you look at more DGEN yield farms, the market lacks liquidity these days. And this means that there's really low total value locked in the more degenerate yield farms that are paying out higher yields. So look at this, 1.67 million total value locked across the entire El Dorado finance pool. Now, this means that if you have over 1 million and have about 100k to invest in, say, one of these pools, then you are really a market mover. You'll be the one causing slippage. You'll be the one actually impacting these yields. In such cases, the play would likely to be to go for blue chips, such as stablecoin yield farms or Bitcoin yield farms. Now, the yields might be quite a bit lower in such cases, around 20% or even 10%, or you can even go into things like GMX that's also paying out 10%. Now, obviously, these might not sound like very attractive propositions, especially if you're looking for the highest yields possible. However, these are also likely to be the ones that are going to be sustained for the longest periods of time and are least likely to result in you losing your capital. Because let's admit it, once you reach this level of net worth, first of all, congratulations. And second of all, your priorities would probably be to preserve that net worth rather than risking it all on random shit. So that is the reason why once you are up to this net worth level, I would say that the best move that you can play would be to go for slightly lower yield, but also slightly lower risk farms. Illustrating this example, if someone were to have $100,000 to invest in a 20% APR yield farm, they're earning $20,000 a year just by putting DAI into Gearbox, for example. So that actually dominates the returns of what we saw in the earlier two cases. So you don't need to take a really, really high risk while still earning a pretty usable passive income. So that's been my brief breakdown of what I personally think that you should be doing at each net worth level. I'll be doing this as I progress along my net worth journey and adjusting risk accordingly because it simply makes more sense from my perspective. But now it's over to you guys. What do you guys think and do you agree or disagree? Leave your thoughts in the comments down below. And if you're more interested in the specifics of how I go about, you're going to want to check out this video over here. With all that being said though, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.